when good men differ on religious teachings, what are we to do? There's only one answer. There's only ever been one teacher without error. If you read Plato or Aristotle or Seneca or Cicero, they all have mistakes and very bad ones. But no one has ever found a mistake in the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. So he is to be our guide in finding the truth. Not some old creed, not some denominational teaching, but Jesus of Nazareth. May I remind you of a warning about predestination that John Calvin gave. He said the teaching was terrible, but no one can understand it. It's a mystery. That's what Calvin said. But he gave this warning. Don't think too much about your own predestination or the result may be terrible and prolonged misery, even complete stupor, dire torment. So the modern, so to speak, author of predestination said, don't think too much about it. It'll only give you pain. Well, how can we very quickly sum up the evidence against predestination? Very simple. You'll get it within a couple of minutes. Number one, nowhere does the Bible in plain, straightforward words state what Calvin teaches. Nowhere. The doctrine of predestination is not plainly stated anywhere in Scripture. That's point one. Point two, there are many plain texts about God loving everybody, Christ dying for everybody, that everybody in the visible church has election, are the elect. There are many, many texts, plain texts, that say the opposite to Calvin's predestination. Now the third point is also very important. Calvinistic predestination questions the sincerity of God. Here's God the Son over and over inviting people, come unto me, all ye that are weary and are heavy laden. How often would I have received you? And ye would not. I was like a hen calling her chickens, but ye would not. So the predestinarian teaching says Christ was insincere that even when he called people he knew most couldn't come that's a terrible thing to say about God it questions the love of God it questions the wisdom of God what wisdom is there in causing billions to come into the world only to destroy them what wisdom is there in that what justice is there in that to select people without any reason in the life and to damn others without reason in the life. Questions of justice of God, the grace of God. You know, the New Testament talks about abounding grace. I want to read you from Romans 5. This is so clear. The last verses of Romans 5. Notice how the word all is used here and how grace is used. As the one sin, meaning Adam's, condemned all men, in the same way the one righteous act, Calvary, sets all men free and gives them life. What could be clearer than that? Calvary sets all men free if they'll accept it. Just as many men were made sinners as a result of the disobedience of one man, in the same way many are put right with God as a result of the obedience of the one man. Where sin increased, 
God's grace increased much more. Now in Calvinism, there doesn't seem to be much grace. But in the New Testament, grace abounds. Where sin abounds, that's my life. Grace abounds much more. God is merciful to us. Grace. As sin ruled by means of death, so also God's grace rules by means of righteousness, leading us to eternal life. Did you notice that? Grace rules. It's not a Johnny come lately. It's not way down the bottom. It rules. It's abundant. And so Calvinism questions God's sincerity, his love, his wisdom, his justice, his grace, and his impartiality. Acts chapter 10 says, God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, those who reverence God and do good are accepted by him. Many people never hear the gospel, but the Spirit of God moves on their hearts. And if they respond, because God is no respecter of persons, they are saved. Then lastly, my friends, the Calvinistic view of millions of infants writhing in eternal hellfire is a blasphemy against God. If you want to find a simple scripture passage about God, read Luke 15. The good shepherd goes after the lost sheep. The good lady of the house scrubs and sweeps till she finds the lost coin. And then the good father, his love brings back the prodigal. Dear friends, if we will avoid traditions of men and go by the pure words of Christ through the writers of Scripture, we will not be misled, we will not be deceived, and we will find joy and eternal life. God bless you.